Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Um, excited to be here to talk about some stuff that we've been working on. Uh, it's an honor to be on a program with people like Trip Hawkins, who invented the video game industry. Uh, Trip was actually my first boss in Silicon Valley. He acquired a small company I had a hand in starting that created one of the first 3D MMOs, Meridian 59. Um, also, Gilman Louis, um, I think he's on the program for tomorrow. Gilman, of course, gave us Falcon, uh, but Gilman's also a VC, and he invested in this company that I co-founded called Keyhole that created the technology for Google Earth that eventually was acquired by Google. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting time for the industry. I don't need to tell you guys that. Um, uh, there are a lot of choices, choices for game players and choices for game makers. Uh, we've got amazing new consoles. We've seen social come in and make this huge impact on the gaming industry. We've seen phones and tablets turn into a multi-billion dollar category all on their own. And we've got some really amazing new hardware coming our way, things like Oculus. Very excited to hear what those guys have to say today. Um, and wearables. You know, at CES, there were literally dozens of wearables that were introduced. Everything from exercise trackers to lots of different watches to high-end things like Google Glass. And this is the area that captivated our imagination, this intersection between um, the virtual and the real. And that's kind of where we're focusing. No big surprise, since we're coming at it from the perspective of maps and Earth. Um, I spent about six years at Google building out that part of our product line. Uh, we launched satellites with our partners. We created aerial collection platforms, Street View, building out this 3D virtual world. And we would look at that, and games were often part of the conversation when we were, um, as we were building that out. Often, um, when we updated Larry and Sergey about our progress, Sergey more than once said, I just want this to be a game. I want to drive around and blow stuff up. Um, a few years later, uh, we add smartphones to the mix. The iPhone happened, Android, uh, and you have location. So at that point, we looked at it and said, yeah, we want to invest in this area and see if we can create something innovative that brings together maps, location, social, and games. So we created this little group. It's run like a startup inside of Google. It's called Niantic Labs. Niantic is kind of an interesting word. It was the name of a ship that sailed to San Francisco during the gold rush. At that time, everybody was coming to San Francisco, and nobody wanted to leave. So these ships just piled up in the harbor. They got dragged on shore and then reused for various things, hotels, bars, brothels, a little bit less, like Las Vegas, I guess. Um, but uh, one of those, Niantic, is still buried under the streets of San Francisco. It's like this cool kind of secret thing that you walk by and you don't really know it's there. And that idea that there are these really interesting, cool kind of secret things out in the world, and we can use technology to help people go out and explore the real physical world and discover them, that kind of underpins everything that we're doing within Niantic. The kind of proof of concept that we built to explore this area that we're starting to call real world games um, is Ingress. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the product, I want to play a short video just to kind of introduce the concept to you, and then we'll talk about some of the things that we've learned from this. So if we could run that video, please. What was the net effect of the Niantic project? We had crossed a threshold in which global security could be at risk. Decrypting the data was the mistake. This is not psychosis or some cognitive break, but an actual takeover of the mind. Much of the public sculpture found in our cities is based on design seeded in the human mind. Certain places have an energy that not only attracts people, but attracts events. The mission of 13 Magnus is to monitor the effects of mind hacking. Obviously, this will be done with the highest of security to make sure that the ideas do not contaminate or threaten humanity. This all leads to Niantic. I know that many tools will be needed to fight this battle. You just have to know where to look and know what you're seeing. Portals emit exotic matter into our world, and that matter has certain effects on our world. I started noticing that there were energy fields anomalies on Earth all around me. A few of them exhibit properties that are as yet unexplained. I know that there are others out there. What if they're already among us, but we don't realize it? And I must be prepared to work with them or fight them. They are coming. Something's wrong out there in the world. This doesn't feel like a scientific study. 
The one hope lies in understanding what happened at Niantic. Not all mysteries are solvable, but the joy comes in the pursuit. So that's the concept. Um, as we were building the game, we actually came up with four kind of design principles that guided uh, the entire project. The first of those is that the world is the game. We wanted to transform the entire globe into the basic game board. So we went in and mined um, information from um, stuff that we had available within Google. Uh, we selected historical sites around the world, works of public artwork, and those became the basic places on this global game map that you would interact with. You've got to go out and interact with these places in real life. You actually have to get out of the virtual and into the real in order to play the game that, that we wanted to build. So you have to move to play. Um, it was important to me as a parent. I grew up with video games. I love them. They were my introduction to programming and to computers. But you know, I hate to see my kids sitting on the couch on a beautiful day. Kids, on average, spend three hours a day glued to the screen. Um, you know, 80% of kids actually don't get the recommended daily amount of exercise, and this has major health implications. I was surprised to learn that um, lack of exercise is blamed for as many deaths every year as smoking, 57 million deaths a year. And this is from things like breast cancer, colon cancer, type 2 diabetes, conditions related to a sedentary lifestyle. So we thought it would be good if we could use these great incentives within games to actually get people out and moving in the real world. The third um, principle was urban exploration. So I mentioned this idea of hidden secrets in the world. We didn't want to just send people out to any places in the world. We wanted to pick really interesting places that had a story behind them and hopefully encourage people to, to discover the awesome little secret places in their own communities and towns that maybe they had walked by a dozen times or a hundred times and not noticed before. So maybe to encourage people to notice and engage with their local community just a little bit more through the game. The final, the final principle was social. So it was designed as an MMO. So of course, everybody's, by definition, in that same game world, interacting with all of the people that are playing the game. But there was this new component of real-world social interaction. And we didn't quite know what that would mean. And in fact, we've learned a lot about what that means in the context of games like this. And I want to talk about some of those learnings today. So just to break down the mechanics of what actually happens with Ingress and how it works, I wanted to step through those. Um, so the main action within the game happens within the game client. So this runs on Android, game, uh, Android phones today. It will soon run on iOS. This is your view into the virtual game world that we're laying on top of the real world. So you see what's happening in the game overlaid on top of a map. You can see things through your scanner that you can't see with your own eyes. Um, so the portals are present there. You can see them as kind of these bright spots on the map. You can see exotic matter that's sprinkled through the world. You collect this by moving around. This powers everything that you do in the game. And you're basically visiting these portals, trying to take them over for one of two factions. You join one of two teams when you join the game. Um, and connect them together to take over parts of the world. So um, it's a little bit like playing Risk around the kitchen table, except rather than playing with six or seven people, you're playing with millions of people around the world, and you're trying to take over the real world. Uh, there's a component to the game where you can see what's happening um, through a web browser, so you can see a global map of everything that's happening around the world when people are playing the game. You can communicate with other players, but you can't actually play through this interface because you have to go outside uh, and move to play. There's a deep story that's told in the style of an alternate reality game or an ARG, and it comes out in the form of videos, leaked documents, audio snippets um, that come out through social media. This is a big part of the game. We have over 1.7 million followers um, consuming this and interacting with us on a daily basis. Um, we also tell the story in a linear form to help people onboard into the game world. So there are a couple of novellas that are published through the Google Play Store and on Amazon, and some comic books as well. And finally, there's a weekly YouTube show. So this is in the form of a news program. Our host, Susanna Moyer. So she's updating people on what's happening within the world of Ingress, and we're really making the players the stars of the experience there and featuring their real-world exploits. 
So what have we learned from this proof of concept that might benefit you as you hopefully think about exploring this genre of games? First of all, there's an appetite for them. Um, we've had over 2 million installs of the product. A large portion of those are monthly active users. Uh, we launched it simultaneously around the world. I think that's a key to the success that we've had. It's being played in over 132 countries. Um, lots of followers on Google+, lots of interactions within the game, and lots of people now submitting additional portals or game locations to us. So we allow people to find those special places in their own community that they want to be part of this global game map and submit them to us. The real reason that I'm here to talk to you guys is um, I'm in awe of the level of player engagement that we've seen, a really intense level of engagement that I think has kind of shocked everybody on the team. This is one of our players, uh, a woman in Italy. This is her forearm. Uh, this is a permanent tattoo, not a temporary tattoo, of one of the two faction logos. We were kind of surprised to see this. I mean, the game's still in beta, so uh, a little bit nervous about seeing permanent tattoos out there. This is her with one of our community managers. But now we've seen over two dozen of these pop up all over the world. People are doing this totally of their own initiative. The game logo, one of the two faction logos. We had our first proposal at an event that we had last fall. So serious engagement with this game that's very new, still in beta. Why are we seeing this? I don't fully know the answer to that, but I would say there are a couple of things. One is getting people out and moving in the real world has generated a huge response. And I will talk more about that. But just that movement and the endorphins and kind of just piggybacking on the positive sensations and experiences that that generates is one thing. But the key, I think, is the fact that we're bringing people together in the real world. You know, so much of technology is isolating us, pulling us inward, encouraging us to focus on the screen, and ingress is the opposite of that. We're pulling people together in the real world. And the key learning for me was that people like other people. <laughs> people like meeting other people in real life. And we were kind of surprised at the degree to which um, this has become part of the ingress experience. Um, there was a question about would people move to play games? You know, gamers are sedentary. Gamers just want to sit uh, you know, in the den and play on TV. Um, I think we've disproven that. Uh, we've seen people get out and really enjoy playing the game in all forms. You know, in everywhere from you know, taking uh, your baby for a walk in the park with the ingress counter mount mounted to the carriage, uh, to people renting helicopters to play the game, pilots playing the game, uh, hopefully while they're not flying commercial passengers, uh, people modding their motorcycles and cars, people taking commercial air. Uh, one gamer modded his chair, actually, so he could play Ingress better. Uh, a lot of people playing on bikes, uh, people modifying their bikes in various ways. I'm a biker. I bike to work, so I love to see this. Uh, we were thinking about walking and biking when we designed the game. And fitness. You know, we didn't design this as a fitness application, um, but a lot of um, players are responding to this. They're sending their stories to us. Linda, who lost 35 pounds. Kirsten lost more than 40 pounds. That's Agent Nana um, on the far left. She's a very active Ingress player in Seattle. Uh, she told me she walks about two miles every day, and it helps her control her diabetes. So these are people that maybe don't identify as athletes, but they're really responding to the game incentive just to get out and be more healthy. Some people take this to extremes. So um, Henri there in Berlin walked 105 kilometers in two days, circumnavigating Berlin to play Ingress, uh, hacked about 200 portals on the way. People have climbed mountains to capture portals for Ingress. Uh, you can see a couple of, ex of examples there in France and in Italy. Um, there's an agent in Scotland who's walked over 400 miles playing Ingress, and she's updating people about that on Google+. We introduced a game mechanic in um, Q4, which took this to another level. We basically took 13 virtual objects and dropped them all around the globe. So the two factions were attempting to find these objects, to claim them, and then they had to transport them back to either San Francisco or Buenos Aires, transport them by linking them between portals. And this uh, generated a huge amount of collaboration and communication, not just between agents playing in the same city, but agents working together between countries. And in fact, even doing international travel in order to grab these objects and move them around. So this is just one example. Um, some agents from Moscow, they flew down to Israel. They were in pursuit of one of these objects. They um, clashed with the Israeli agents and got help from some other Israeli agents who were trying to control these objects. 
They drove a total of, I think, 1,400 kilometers in 30 hours, uh, back and forth across Israel two times, finally got the object, shipped it back to Russia, and I think they just had a great time. I mean, if you look at the pictures, it looks like a really fun road trip. Um, a more extreme example of that in this same sort of pursuit of these objects, um, there were agents who actually worked to charter a, a bush plane in a remote part of Alaska so that this ingress player could fly in, knock out a portal, and in fact, there was a weather front coming in. She had about 30 minutes to get on the ground, knock out the portal, and get out before she got uh, locked in, and she was able to do that. So she had this really exciting real-world adventure that was driven by this, this mobile game. There's an even more uh, extreme example of that with an agent in Russia. He's traveled, he claims, more than 80,000 kilometers playing the game back and forth across the continent multiple times. When he traveled to the far eastern part of Russia, he had to get permission from the Russian Secret Service to board a helicopter to go to one of the port towns out there. You see his photo there in Yakutsk, um, 40 degrees below Celsius. He waited for four days for opposing players to come into the town so that he could ambush them and grab one of these objects. <laughs> so the social part of this, as I said, surprised us. We actually thought that people would want to play with people they already knew, that you would grab people from work or friends from school and go out and play Ingress together. But what we found was a huge appetite for meetups where players could meet other new people and make new friends. So when we started seeing this happening, we basically began to support that. Um, very lightly, sometimes sending a community representative in, and then finally by taking these events and actually making the story dependent on what happened at a particular city at a particular day. Um, so that what happened at these meetups, there was gameplay involved and it was actually shaping the course of the story. So we've had several dozen of these now around the world, um, and you can see um, this would be anywhere from 80 to 100 to 200 to 400 people coming together. Um, they'll walk through the streets of the city, uh, playing Ingress for about four hours. Um, they bring their kids, baby strollers, uh, people play on bikes, and then there's a meetup at the end. And this kind of formula is working all around the world. Um, people are putting a lot of energy into planning for these events. So you see the two women here holding this document. The document is a 12-page plan for how their faction, several hundred agents, were to act on a particular meetup that happened in Washington, D.C. So the plan was actually developed by Ingress players in Russia. It was shipped to these women in Washington, and then they ran the operations that day. And it was like a military operation. Every person was broken into a squad. They had specific orders that they followed throughout the course of the entire day. Uh, they were going after sites like the White House and the Capitol building. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, what is the NSA thinking about this plan that's being circulated amongst all these people? Um, a lot of passion for making things, as was mentioned in the last presentation. We're seeing all kinds of 3D stuff, hoodies, t-shirts, uh, which we generally encourage as long as they're not selling it. Uh, and players doing recruiting for us. So players all around the world have made their own recruiting posters to uh, pull, more, pull more people into the game. So that's my version of kind of this social phenomenon that's been happening. But we also wanted you guys to hear directly from users. So we have a video where we've done a few interviews with folks at these events. And uh, I want to roll that video now. Leaked Niantic technology under the codename Ingress has allowed ordinary citizens to interact with XM. Agents converged on Portland, Oregon. Another confrontation occurred in Milan, Italy. Following the events in San Francisco, it is clear that XM is a very real thing. Weapons will not always win a war. Sometimes it is the hearts of men. And numbers. There's some things you need to know. Started playing as soon as I got the invite. Snap on the sneakers and just ran out of the house. We've been through any number of iterations of our strategies, what we're going to do, where we're going to be. Agent activity is spiking to an all-time high. There are so many kinds of people, and they're always friendly. The community is brilliant. I was not a gamer before. I've made so many connections in my local community that I would have never made otherwise. I think that the world's been ready for something like Ingress for a really long time. 
But what is Ingress? Ingress is a giant game of the capture the flag. Where you play a video game, but in real life. But it's not just two hills or something like that. It's throughout the world. There's nothing really like it out there. Ingress is a augmented reality game. The Ingress is not a game. The line between reality and a game and the story get blurred. This is the kind of thing that everybody's always wanted to do. Like you bring video games into real life. Agents are being encouraged to report areas which feature unique works of art, architecture, or other unusually creative sites. is the central part of gameplay. Maybe there's 20 in your neighborhood, maybe there's 10. I've learned a lot of history based on the portals that I've seen. So you find yourself going in a lot of different places, checking out a lot of new and different things that you never would have before. I've probably lost about 15, 20 pounds at this point. It helps break down barriers of race and gender and everything else. It's about people gaming, not only from behind a computer screen, but in real life. This is a huge thing for the gaming industry and just for social networking in general. It's always evolving, and I feel like we're part of that evolution. Anything could happen, it's ingress, you know? The Enlightenment will win. We have to turn it off. Excuse me. There are certain things DICE attendees need to know about ingress, exotic matter, and the Niantic project, which, frankly, people have been covering up. Mr. Hankey, if I may. Susanna, go ahead. Uh, my name is Susanna Moyer, and I host a weekly news show called The Ingress Report. Now, despite attempts by mainstream media and certain covert agencies to suppress the story, there is no doubt that exotic matter is real and that it changes people and perhaps even human evolution. The question is whether these changes are good or bad. Now, there are two ideological factions, the enlightened who support XM and the resistance who fear it. Now, agents from both factions are converging here tonight at 5 p.m. They'll be struggling to control the exotic matter portals in this area, and I urge you all to join them. Don't stand by and let others define the course of human history. Just See and experience it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. <laughs> she obviously, uh, she takes her job very seriously. Um, but I hope that you guys, some of you will be able to join us tonight. Uh, we will be meeting in the bar arcade lounge around 5 o'clock. We've actually got Android loaner devices, if you don't have an Android, so you can uh, use one of those. And there'll be a lot of local players here playing as well. So you can meet people uh, up close and personal and ask them about the game. So um, we, uh, we're very excited about what we've learned. And we think that this idea of real world games are viable. Uh, we love the idea of people being motivated by technology and game incentives to get out and move and explore and discover new things about the world. So we would love to see more games like this get built. So to facilitate that, we're taking the technology that we use to create Ingress and turning that into a set of APIs so that other people can build cool experiences like this. Uh, we will be working with a small number of developers this year, and we will be making those APIs available to a larger set of people next year. The other thing that we're doing is taking this concept of Google as an entertainment platform and helping people understand how to more fully utilize that. What I mean by that is the kind of thing that we've done with Ingress, where we take Google Plus social as a storytelling mechanism, YouTube as a mechanism for providing video content about the environment, Google Play as a way to get books and comic books out there, to use those things in conjunction with games to really create an environment that people can live in. Uh, not just for a few hours while they're playing the game, but engage with communities over days, weeks, and even years. So we've announced one project uh, to move this idea forward. We're working with an author, James Fry, a property called Endgame that will come out as a book later this year and a movie with 20th Century Fox after that. Uh, and we really loved the fact that James came to us and really shared this vision of creating story and telling it across all these mediums with games being right in the middle of that. So um, we're really excited to see what other people are gonna build to get people out, moving, and exploring in the real world. And I hope that some of you can join us this evening and try Ingress for yourselves. Thank you. <laughs>